This is the deciding factor for me. This is the one reason most of you will love the Plus more than the original. In this video, I'm gonna show you all the differences between the Akai MPK Mini Mark III and the MPK Mini Plus. This video will answer the question, which one is right for you? Let's get started. Price. The original MPK Mini Mark III is one of the most popular MIDI keyboards you can get. It retails for $119, but you can usually find it for $99. The MPK Mini Plus costs $169, and weirdly enough, Sweetwater lists the retail as $349, which has got to be a typo. Anyway, that's a $70 difference in street price. I'm gonna list the differences by most impactful, and later in the video, I'll share some alternatives to both of these keyboards that I think you should really consider. The most obvious difference is size, of course. The MPK Mini is 12.5 by 7.13 by 1.75 inches, while the MPK Mini Plus is 17.76 by 7.08 by 2.04 inches. So they both kind of fit in a backpack, well, mostly. And they're both kind of lightweight as well. Let's talk keybed. Both keybeds feel exactly the same, but the MPK Mini Plus has more keys, and those extra keys make a big difference. It's just so much easier playing chords and even more complex melodies with these keys. These are mini keys on both keyboards, so if you're a pianist, these take some getting used to. But that's typical of most mini keyboards, except the Artoria Mini Lab, which has the best mini keys on the market. The drum pads feel exactly the same on both. Akai has the best drum pads of all mini keyboards at this price, so you'll be happy with either of these. Question, what's more important to you, drum pad feel or key feel? Comment below. The MPK Mini has a joystick to control pitch bend and modulation. I never liked the joystick, so I was happy when they added traditional wheels on the MPK Plus. Much better. And they kept the joystick as well. You can configure what the joystick controls, so you've got that little extra on the Mini Plus. Hey, if any of you own one of these keyboards with the joystick, let me know what you use the joystick for in the comments below. Of course, both keybeds have octave up and down controls as well. Both keyboards also feature the note repeat and full level features, which gives you some nice options when drumming on these. But the Plus has an extra trick when it comes to the drum pads and the sequencer. I'll get to that later in the video. And hey, if you're enjoying this content, hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. Now, depending on how you typically make music, the difference in DAW control could be the deciding factor in which one you choose. This is the deciding factor for me. If you're recording music on your computer, these DAW features help your workflow a lot. Let's cover the biggest differences first. Transport controls. These are absent on the MPK Mini Mark III. There are no dedicated buttons for play, stop, record, forward, back, nothing. On the MPK Mini Plus, you've got them. This is the one reason most of you will love the Plus more than the original. The improved efficiency when you're recording is huge. It's important to note compatibility here as well. Both keyboards come with DAW configurations out of the box for GarageBand, MPC Beats, Ableton Live, Logic Pro, and FL Studio. Transport controls aside, both keyboards offer eight endless encoder knobs to control plugin parameters. Works great with Ableton Live out of the box. Now, depending on your DAW, this may require a bit of setup. You can also set up your DAW's mixer volumes to react to the knobs if you want. Hey, I wanna know from you, what DAW do you plan to use with these keyboards? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, next we'll get into scales, chords, and sequencer features, but before we do, let's take a look at the back of these keyboards. Both keyboards have a USB port to connect to your computer and a sustain pedal port. The MPK Plus adds standard MIDI ins and outs, as well as CV and clock ports. It's great if you want to use the onboard arpeggiator and sequencer features 
with hardware synths. Both keyboards offer an onboard arpeggiator with the same options to set octave, division, swing, latch, and BPM. The Plus also has a gate control. On the MPK Mini, the arpeggiator can really just control your DAW's instruments. And this is a bit redundant as most DAWs come with arpeggiators built in, although it could be useful during a live performance. The arpeggiator is a much more useful feature on the Plus if you connect it to a hardware synth. It gives you the ability to play more complex patterns very efficiently, especially with this sequencer. You'll notice a tiny screen included on both of these keyboards. I honestly don't think it's very useful on the MPK Mini since you'll use this with your DAW mostly, and there's no DAW feedback. When you're turning a knob, you don't know what you're controlling in your DAW. The Mini Lab by Artoria actually shows you the parameter you're changing on the screen. The M32 by Native Instruments does this as well with complete control. On the MPK Mini Plus, the screen is a bit more useful as it shows you the sequencer settings. So let's talk about this sequencer that's only on the MPK Mini Plus. By the way, the inclusion of a sequencer is pretty unique. No other mini keyboard at this price includes both a sequencer and DAW control. So Akai really does give us something special with the MPK Mini Plus. Press the sequencer button and start tapping in notes and the sequencer will cycle through and play what you tap in, and then it repeats. Shift and octave plus gives you a view of the sequence on the tiny screen. Yeah, put on your glasses. But it was a lot of fun using the sequencer to get some interesting results. This is a pretty unique feature that isn't included on most MIDI controllers, and Akai has done a nice job implementing it, especially given the tiny screen. Right here, I'm triggering a drum kit in Ableton. Keep in mind, you can use this same technique with hardware synths and create and output a sequence of notes. The sequences cannot be saved to the keyboard. As soon as I unplug the keyboard, I lost my recording. You've got two sequencers for pad and for keys. It has an eight note polyphony. I found this sequencer pretty useful when sequencing a drum beat and then playing keys along with it. You can control the MIDI output channels to make this possible. This is a handy feature for hardware synths, but I doubt I would use it in a DAW, which is my typical method for making music. The MPK Plus also has some scale and chord features that may be useful if you're new to music theory. The scale feature lets you set a scale and then only hear the notes in that scale when you play the keys. The chord feature lets you select a type of chord and then play that on the keys. From what I've heard from all of you, these features aren't used that much on any keyboard that offers them. Let's talk a little bit about some alternatives to these keyboards. If you're looking for a DAW controller, that is if you're recording music on your computer most of the time, the MPK Mini gives you the basics, but unfortunately it doesn't include the transport buttons. And for around the same price, you can get other keyboards with these features. Look into the brand new Mini Lab 3, the Oxygen Pro Mini, and others. You'll get pretty much the same features plus those transport controls. Now, at $169, the MPK Plus gives you all the main controls you need for your DAW. If anything is missing, I'd say it's the feedback from your DAW on this screen. If you really want to see what you're doing in your DAW on a tiny screen, check out the Mini Lab 3. If you're an Ableton user and want control of clip and scene triggering, you should really check out the Novation Launch Key keyboards. Novation really makes the most comprehensive Ableton Live controllers out there. Now, if you really want to control your hardware synths, you can do the basics with any other mini keyboard that features a mini outport. This includes the Novation Launch Key Mini, the Mini Lab 3, and a few others. But when it comes to onboard sequencing, the MPK Mini Plus and the Artoria Key Steps are really the main ones that you should consider. Of course, your paying extra for these features to be combined on the MPK Plus. Keep that in mind. I hope you found this video useful. If you want to check out my review of other mini keyboards, I've rounded up the top mini keyboards in a video right here. Keep making the music you love and I'll see you there.